looks like we're finally live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreational programming session. How about that? Uh, let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. So, uh, yesu, yesu, yesu. Uh, live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch.television? I, I don't know why I click on that person, but it's going to stay here for a while. <laughs> uh so and today we are programming in typescript right so that's uh, precisely what we're doing today i'm gonna give the link to the twitch channel twitch.tv slash sorting and i'm gonna ping everyone who's interested in being pinged and the stream has officially started the stream has officially started so uh hello hello everyone welcome 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 so what are we doing today today we're gonna be continue working on a very old project of mine that I developed some time ago, and the project is called Emote Jam. It's a simple website that generates animated BTTV emotes from static images. And in fact, I developed that uh, project before, to which even had support for animated emotes and automatic emote generation. So, and then once I released this thing, they magically implemented that thing in Twitch. I, I don't know if that's somehow related. Uh, maybe not, maybe it's just a coincidence. Uh, hello, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Naughty Gnaseo. I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly. Uh, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription, your first subscription, by the way, and welcome to our Epic TypeScript Club about that so essentially you can find the uh, the website deployed in here right it's completely open source i'm going to put the link uh, to this thing in the description of course so the source code is available on github so you can find it in here and the website itself the website itself is available at uh, sorting.org slash emote jam, right? It's a static website, right? To, to some extent, it doesn't have a backend. So it's sort of like a serverless application. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know if I'm using word serverless correctly, but I don't really care. So it doesn't have a backend and it works entirely on your uh, on your machine. You can find it in here if you are interested. All right. So what essentially it does, you can upload uh, some sort of emote in here, right? And then apply some animated filters. So let's actually take uh, some uh, other emotes. So it uses the sodium clown emote uh, as, a, um, as a test. So we can just do something like uh, sodium flushed, um, sodium flushed. So this is sodium flushed emote. And I'm gonna just copy uh, the link to that emote. Thank you so much. I'm Jaguar. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly for tier one, for two months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic uh, type uh, script club. Uh, so let me find emote jam. So here it is. And I'm going to wget this entire thing. Hopefully I do that correctly. It's sodium flushed PNG, right? Sodium flashed PNG. Um, so, and if I open this entire thing, it is in fact sodium flushed. Can't, can't argue with that. Uh, FM, and if I open this thing like that, so you can essentially just like take a file and drag and drop it. Uh, like so, and as you can see, uh, you have this thing in here. So, and then you have a selection of different filters that you can apply. So, this is hop is the first filter. There is a hopper, which basically hops a bit faster. Uh, there's the overheat, which uh, you know hops the fastest and also does that. And there's a bunch of things in here. So, the bounce, uh, circle, slide, uh, laughing, uh, blob, uh, go, elevator, <laughs> array. <laughs> Pride, uh, hard, so flushing hard, uh, peak, uh, well, also we have a matrix, flag, uh, Thanos, it's actually very interesting, I think Columbetka submitted this one, yeah, you can actually make Thanos, and I guess that's it, so, and after that, after you selected the filter, you can generate a GIF, right, you can generate a GIF out of that, uh, and uh, this is a GIF that you can essentially upload somewhere to BTTV or these days you can upload it to Twitch. Uh, initially it was developed before Twitch even had support for all of that, so yeah. That's basically the project. That's basically the project. I could probably simplify the UI. I think there's a lot of words in here. Uh, I think I could just like take all of these three components and just like stack them together from left to right. And it's going to be sort of understandable how to use this entire thing. So I don't know. Uh, so essentially recently uh, I learned how to do ripple effects in OpenGL, right? So uh, I think you can find this stream somewhere here right on my channel on my turning daily channel 
uh, where is that Sodding Daily? So here is a Sodding Daily channel. And uh, in the Tony Daily channel, I did a stream where I learned how to do uh, ripple effect using OpenGL. So here's an interesting thing. This uh, application is using WebGL to generate emotes, right? It is using actually shaders, uh, WebGL uh, shaders. And I was thinking, since I know how to apply like water ripple effects, uh, why not create a new filter that somehow uses all of that? Right. So, uh, and that's basically going to be the topic of today's stream. We're going to take the ripple effect that I learned how to use, how to do in OpenGL, and I'm going to try to apply it as a filter in Emojam. So it's going to be available to everyone. So that's basically going to be the topic of today's stream, hopefully. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You never know. The streams are live. Maybe it's going to get derailed to something else. Uh, so, and uh, OpenGL. Uh, ripple effect stream. So here is the stream. <clears throat> so okay. So I forgot how to use uh, how to program in TypeScript. So I'll have to remember how to do that, <laughs> right? Because I haven't touched this project for quite some time already. So I don't quite remember how to use this entire thing. Uh, I'm gonna clean everything and I'm gonna try to fetch the latest things, right? And we'll see how it goes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so I don't have any latest changes, which is nice. So that means I have the latest thing in here. Uh, so let's actually go uh, to here. Eh, there we go. So I'm gonna go to here. Uh, and did I leave myself any instructions on how to start the development? Okay, so the first thing I need to do, I need to do npm install. Do I have npm? I think I do have npm. So let's do npm install. So prepare like 100 megabyte, gigabytes of dependencies. But I don't think it's gonna be a lot of dependencies. I think this project doesn't have much dependencies at all. Uh, right. So let me see. Yeah, so the only dependencies it has is uh, basically TypeScript. So it only has dev dependencies. Look at that. Uh, right, it uses the typings of gif.js uh, and the TypeScript itself. And so that's it. Uh, so it's not going to be too much. And we have zero vulnerabilities, but we're also using a very old version of NPM. In fact, I'm using a very old version of Node. It's 13th one. As far as I know, these kids these days, they use the 17th or 16th version. But uh, since this project works with such an old Node, I don't really have much reason to upgrade yet. So uh, I think I'm going to be fine with the 13th version of Node. So, but yeah. I'm just too lazy to upgrade, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let me see. And after that, what we want to do, we want to start the sort of like a watch thingy. Uh, right, so I can start the compiler in the watch mode. And uh, of course, I didn't have to do that. And uh, there we go. So it's actually like watching the source code and constantly compiling things. So I can go into filters, for instance. Yeah, there we go. So this is a global uh, array of filters, sort of speak, right? So th these are the filters. And this is just basically a map from a name of the filter to a filter interface, right? And here's the filter interface that we have in here. So this is basically the description of the filter. The two most important important fields of the filter is uh, vertex and fragment and these two are strings right they are literally shaders they're literally webgl shaders that apply the effect uh, right and for now you actually like put shaders right in a string which is not particularly convenient uh, but that's something that we'll have to deal with maybe i'm going to just copy paste this thing to uh, to a separate file or something like that uh, and then work with that so yeah, that's basically what we'll have to do. On top of that, I think uh, you can just run a web server for, for a local version. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, there we go. So you can just do Python 3 HTTP server and that will work allegedly. Uh, that will allegedly work. So let's actually take a look. So I started the server at uh, 6969. It actually listens outside, which I'm not super happy with, but maybe that's fine. So if I do a localhost 6969, it, oh, okay, it's 68. There we go. So here is the local version of a mold gem, right? How about that? So there is a global version on sodding.org uh, sodding emote gem. 
So there's that one. And this is my local one uh, on, at localhost 6969. So yeah, the, the project is actually extremely simple. It is extremely simple, doesn't have a backend. It's literally a bunch of like static files that work entirely on your front end. And you can just serve them over, over the like Python or maybe some sort of like a Node.js script that serves over HTTP or something like that. So yes, 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 kawaii freaking this. I just realized that, oh yeah, okay. Uh, so we have a bunch of subs in here. Thank you so much, Pituna, Pituna for a uh, tier one subscription. I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and Steven Server, thank you so much for four months of Twitch Prime subscription. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone, welcome to our epic TypeScript club. How about that? How about that? Uh, alrighty. So what do we have? Cool. Uh, the first thing we probably want to do, right, we probably want to add a new sort of like a shader. So let's go into the filters and let's introduce literally a new filter. So how are we going to call the uh, the filter? So let's call it a ripple, uh, right? And this is what we're going to have in here. So do we have is yeah there we go so all of these things are mandatory type missing following properties transparent uh, duration vertex and fragment man i love typescript right so i haven't touched this project in a while and it's already telling me what i have to add in here so it's it's, it's amazing thank you microsoft for for typescript i never thought i'm gonna say that but yeah mm -mm -mm. okay so let's take a look. We need to define the transparent. So as far as I know, transparent is basically the color that is going to be used as the transparent color. Uh, right, and as you can see in here, transparent color right now is the green one. So there is even an explanation for that. Like a bright green color is going to be transparent when the actual final GIF is rendered. There's no way to change that yet, but we are working on it. If your image contains that color, I'm deeply sorry. <laughs> I don't remember kind of writing that, but it's actually very nice that I apologize to the users of the uh, of the program that the program is so shitty. Uh, so yeah, and I suppose this is basically the color, right? That's the basically the color that is going to be used for the transparent one. So let's just like use the green one. If I remember correctly, I wanted to have some sort of like a dial that allows you to change what's going to be tr transparent color. In fact, I remember. Yeah, we had a feature that allows you to change the parameters of the shaders because here you have parameters of the shaders and uh, the uh, the application is supposed to generate UI to adjust those parameters. But I never kind of finished that thing. So it was like behind the feature flag, if I remember correctly. So yeah, I haven't touched this project in a while. Um, let me see. So here's the index. So here's the feature params. Uh, right, so the feature params and what we're looking for when we're looking for feature params. Yeah, we're looking for this flag. I think you can enable feature parameters by just like putting this flag in here. All right. Oh, there we go. So and now you can actually control all, all of these things. You can control how high you can go, the interval, the scale. Uh, so all of that is controllable. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. So, and these parameters of the filters are sort of defined within the filter itself, right? So, yeah, so these are the parameters and the UI is generated based on these parameter descriptions. Um, yeah, but this feature is not fully finished. That's why it's not really available. It is behind the feature flag, right? So if you want to access this thing, you have to provide this feature flag. And in fact, it should work on the uh, officially deployed instance, right? Because it's automatically redeployed every time, uh, right? I push something in there. So you should be able to access this kind of shit in there, right? So this is the official instance. Why I can't scroll down? Is my computer done? Yeah, my computer is done. Okay. Uh, so here it is. So we should be able to access this thing in here. And there we go. <clears throat> so it's actually pretty cool to play with. So not all of these things have these parameters. Some of them do. But I don't remember which ones. Uh, pride? No. Yeah, I think hard has... Yeah. So the intensity. Yeah, it's just like going in circles. That's basically what it does. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, and then you can render this entire thing. <laughs> I really like that. That's actually very cool. Uh, 
I forgot how cool this. Like sometimes I'm going back to my old projects and I'm thinking, man, what a cool idea! Holy shit! Um, and what's funny is that at the time of the development of those things, I don't really think that it's that cool. Uh, I can only appreciate my project after some time when I go back to them and discover all of these like cool neat things that I put in there. It's kind of interesting. Like I can't appreciate my project while I'm working at them at the time, so I need some time to forget about all of that. Right. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and of course you can then render this into I think. It's taking a little bit of time on my machine, but this is because uh, my machine is, is from 2010 and on top of that, I'm streaming for that machine. I'm streaming and developing from a laptop from 2010. So that's why my setup sometimes is really, really slow. But yeah, it is what it is. It isn't what it isn't. Uh, so 2010, yeah. So I could like basically buy a newer machine, but I kind of like keep using the older machine semi-intentionally uh, because what I found is that when a developer using a shitty old machine, they tend to kind of produce a better software, right? Because they're using their software on a more realistic user machine, right? So, and they don't have an opportunity to just like buy more RAM or buy a, like a better CPU, right? They're forced to actually develop like application that works within these limitations. And usually they tend to be a little bit better. Uh, not saying that everyone has to do that. I'm just saying that for myself, I kind of find it useful, right? I kind of find, uh, find it useful to put limitations on myself, right? I'm not saying that everyone has to do that and not forcing anyone to do that and stuff like that. I'm just saying that for myself, I find this sort of creative limitation a bit useful because it kind of bumps a little bit of the quality of the software I produce, right? I'm speaking for myself, not saying, telling to anyone to do this kind of stuff. Um, right, so uh, thank you so much, Elimin, uh, Element, Element0216 for tier 1 subscription, your first subscription, by the way. And welcome to our Epic Type Script Club. Right. Alrighty. So let me, let me see. Let me, let me see. So this is transparent and we're also going to have a duration. Oh, I do remember that. Duration is actually a mathematical expression that using the parameters that you define in here. So here are the parameters of the shader, right? So like you can define whatever parameters you want, and then you can use these parameters in a mathematical expression to calculate the duration of the, uh, of the final emote. And that is important. That's the duration to loop seamlessly because this entire thing is supposed to loop seamlessly, right? It's quite important. If it doesn't loop seamlessly, it's not really gonna work. Well, uh, right, so something something is really strange going on, so I can't uh, can't really do anything. This is probably because this kind of stuff, right? So let me refresh. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it has to loop seamlessly, uh, right? And if I render this entire thing, it will loop seamlessly. So this is a mathematical expression that computes the duration for the emote to loop seamlessly based on the parameter that user has provided. Because if you put a longer interval, right? So for emote to loop, it has to actually last longer, right? So that's basically what's going on in here. And what's interesting is that here we're uh, providing the mathematical expression as a string, which will make you think that we're probably using something like eval in here, right? But in fact, we're not using eval. I implemented the mathematical expression parser and evaluator uh, specifically to sandbox these mathematical expressions. I fucking did that, yes. Uh, I <laughs> Since I'm a big fan of development, uh, developing programming languages, right? I can just kind of just went ahead and implemented my own parser for mathematical expression and evaluator for mathematical expressions because I can, right? So in that way, I don't have to think about sandboxing, not sandboxing, whatever. Like I have an interpreter within an interpreter, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so, and it doesn't really have to be super fast, right? So goal is to just have like a short mathematical expression that just evaluates, uh, you know, the, the final time. 
so that's basically what we have in here. Um, and it's actually very small. I, I think there's some fuck up here with the um, presidents. I don't quite remember. Uh, yeah, I think we, I think I introduced some presidents. So there's like a two presidents in here. Uh, so that should be, that should be fine. Uh, anyway, uh, so we have a bunch of subs, uh, Gin, Gin Blue, I hope I'm pronouncing them correctly, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription, thank you, thank you, thank you, and Bathtub TV, uh, gifted one tier sub to MM2PL, thank you so much Bathtub TV, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for all of the cookies, okay, so uh, let me actually start developing, I think, I, th I think I'm talking too much. So, as far as I know, it actually in seconds. So, for now, I'm going to say that we're going to have like just two seconds in here. Uh, right. And we're also going to have some parameters. Um, I suppose I'm not going to have any parameters right now. And uh, I'm going to just leave it like this. So, vertex and fragment shader. All right. So, this is going to be vertex. And this one is going to be fragment. But this has to be strings. Uh, fragment. Right. So, there we go. So this is a vertex and fragment and everything seems to be compiling and let's try to refresh this entire thing and it actually crashes and I wonder why. So let's actually find out. Is there anything in the console? So could not compile vertex shader. Yeah, so um, our vertex shader is not correct. I wonder if I can just copy paste some stuff for the vertex shader. So specifically, we probably just need like a main uh, and that is it. So I'm going to just put it in here. For those who doesn't know, by the way, Shader is a small program that is executed on your GPU, right? So the, the reason why, uh, right, the reason why uh, I can generate such smooth animations, look at that. Uh, I'm not sure if it looks smooth, but maybe something like Pride uh, looks extremely smooth, right? So this is like a pixel by pixel animation and it's super fast and it's super smooth. How did I achieve that? I'm using WebGL. I'm actually do that, doing that directly on GPU, right? And uh, there's a thing called shaders. You probably heard about shaders like a lot of times, right? In games, people talk about shaders, uh, shaders this, shaders that, and stuff like that. And shaders are basically programs, small programs that are executed directly on your GPU to actually, you know, um, you know, facilitate the power of the GPU to compute these things super fast. Thanos is another actually good example. Like, how can you compute this fast on a CPU? Maybe on a modern CPU these days you, you can because the image is very slow, but this image can get scaled quite easily and it will still be very smooth and very fast. So shaders are the programs and we store the shaders literally in the strings, right, in the JavaScript strings, and then we uh, give those strings to the WebGL. WebGL compiles those shaders and upload, uploads them to GPU so we can actually run those shaders on the GPU. So, okay, so there's two types, types of shaders, the vertex shaders and the fragment shaders. Uh, vertex shaders just work with vertices of the geometries that we put in there, and fragment shaders work with the individual pixels, right? Um, so, and that's basically what we have in here. So the shader usually starts with the, uh, with the version, right? So we're using a very old version for now. I think we're using WebGL 1.0. One like basically WebGL one. So these days everyone is supposed to use WebGL two, but we still have not migrated to WebGL two, um, which is a shame. But um, I don't know. I think it's fine. Um, I think it's fine for now. Right. So I'm gonna just stub this entire stuff like this, and uh, there we go. So we have some shaders. So let me refresh the the entire thing. And uh, so this is the previous, uh, this is the officially deployed instance and everything seems to be okay. So we have a bunch of warnings in here and here is the ripple, right? So this is a ripple effect and it doesn't do anything, uh, right? But at least it exists in the list of the, uh, of the filters, right? So at least it exists there. Uh, as far as I know, um, for the vertex shader, I think we're gonna just generate the quad Right, simply generate the quad, quad and nothing else. I didn't think we need anything else, but we'll see, we'll see. So let me find something that just simply generates a quad. I think Pride simply generates a quad and nothing else, and that's literally what it does. Um, so we have a bunch of attributes like uniforms and stuff like that, and these are essentially the parameters of the, uh, of the shader itself. So I think for this one, I'm gonna just copy paste this thing. 
Um, right. So let me let me just put it like that. And there we go. So this is the vertex shader. So now if I try to do this kind of stuff, it seems to be working. Uh, for the fragment shader, for the fragment shader, let me actually find the pride. So fragment shaders, I think I'm going to copy paste this thing now. I'm going to copy paste this thing now and just put it in here. And there we go. So uh -huh. there is a pixel. I'm taking the pixel from the texture and I think I can just like make a very basic uh, fragment shader that doesn't really do anything. Right. So I can just put it like that. Uh huh. Do we need anything else? I don't think so. So now in a ripple, oh, goddamn, version directive must occur before anything else. Oh, yeah. All right. So let me see. And pixel declaration undefined. So, oh, yeah, pixel is not defined because I removed it for whatever freaking reason. Um, mm, oh, my God. You know what? I think I'm going to do something like um, texture, texture 2D. Uh -huh. Let's jump back and I'm going to do something like that. So emote is the texture. And that should be it, hopefully. Right, there we go. So now I just have a basic rip, like basic effect that doesn't do anything, right? So this is the input and this is the output, right? That's it. One of the things I can do now, for instance, I can take the current pixel, right? So this is the pixel, uh, vec4 pixel. I'm gonna assign it to, to this variable and I'm gonna put it in here. Uh, I can multiply that uh, thing by some sort of a color, right? Uh, vec4, and what's going to be the color? Let's say that the color is going to be red, right? So let's take the red color and multiply the pixel of the texture by the red color, and we should get the red color. So basically the same texture, but with the red color, right? And we did all of that on the GPU via the, um, via the fragment shader, right? Via the fragment shader. Um, Mm -mm -mm. So that's basically what's going on. And this is the uh, how, for instance, the pride filter works, right? So just like using a uh, rolling um, HSL to to RGB, right? And it just like creates this thing. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically what we're doing here. So for now, I'm not going to do anything. And this is where we want to apply the ripple effect, right? So, but to apply a ripple effect, we need to animate this entire thing, right? So we usually animate by using the time, right? And we already have this uh, like time available for us. So maybe we can just go ahead and, and use that. So how do we apply the ripple effect? How do we apply the ripple effect? So the first parameter, where is my, where is my tablet? So because I want to open my pane, right? I want to open my pane. I'm sorry the, for the cables, they're touching the stand, the microphone stand, and it's producing like weird sounds. Mm -mm. This emote is executing on my GPU only on sodding.org. That's a really weird question. So the, the answer is yes. All right. So uh, let me see. All right. So imagine that we have this texture, right? So we have this texture of the emote that we are um uh, you know animating and stuff like that so it's coordinates are normalized coordinates so that means this is zero zero and this is one and this is one right so this is how usually it goes right so we're gonna do the ripple effect as i did it in in that stream right maybe we can actually take a look at how i did that so let's let's find the open the open gl template right mm, so let me see uh, 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 uh. so I already have that Mm, and let me fetch the latest thing. Let me fetch the latest thing. Okay, git merge origin master. And uh, let's recompile the entire thing. So this is going to be build posigs. And let's start the entire thing. Yeah, there we go. So this is basically the ripple effect that we implemented on the previous stream. As you can see, there's like some ripple that's going from the center and uh, yeah, and it's applied on the entire thing. So this is the effect that I want to bring to the emote gem, right? 
Uh, and the way it works, right, the way it works, essentially we're computing the distance, we're computing the distance of a particular uh, pixel, right? So we, for instance, we're rendering this pixel. We're computing the distance from the center of the texture to, uh, to that specific pixel, right? So this is the distance. Then, uh, if we apply some sort of like a sine wave to that distance, we'll get some sort of like a height of the ripple function that sends ripple from the center, right? So if you sort of take this vector and look at it as x and use it, um, uh, use it basically as an input to the sine, so you get sort of like uh, this thing, and this is this wave, this two-dimensional wave, but from the side. It's sort of like a cut of that wave from the side. And you will get this sort of like uniform sine ripple, right? So you can get this uniform sine ripple. Usually to make this a little bit more interesting, people apply some uh, so-called sombrero function, right? Which actually looks like this, right? So, and the reason why it looks like that is because they take this D and divide it by D. Right. So since D is a function that uh, essentially, right, goes from uh, from zero to like one and to, to infinity or like in our case, it's going to be one, but whatever. Uh, and we take sort of inverse of this entire thing. We sort of like applying this curve to this function. We are like uh, connecting them together. And because of that, the final thing becomes sort of like this. So you can actually Google up some rare functions, some rare. Is that how you spell it? Function. I hope that Google is going to correct me. Uh, it's actually O. Yeah, this is how it looks like. Th does that make any sense? Does that explanation make any sense? Uh, but yeah, so essentially you uh, combining combining hyperbola. I think I think effectively you're combining hyperbola and the sign, and you get this kind of thing, right? And you just like transform that into dimensions, and you get the height. And then once you've got the height of that function, you can use that height as an offset within the texture to create the warp effect, right? So that's how you can essentially use that. Um, mm -mm. Uh, does that make any sense? Does that explanation make any sense? It, it kind of makes sense in my head, uh, but when I try to put uh, put that in the words, I'm not sure if it actually does. Gia, thank you so much for 32 months, two to, two to the power of five, by the way, 30, uh, 32, two to the power of five, of tier two subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome back to our epic uh, math club. Uh, right, so, and also another Kelvin wine quotes and 3000. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Thank you so much for a three months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, so <laughs> I think I nailed your nickname. I'm, I'm really sorry if I didn't, like, I'm not really good at, at speaking, as you can see. Um, okay, go. So let's go. Ooh, and let's go. Uh, so let's find the distance from the center, right? So essentially the coordinates of this entire thing is UV, right? So we can take UV and um, so how far it is from the center? So the center is going to be VEC2, uh, center is essentially VEC205. If you do VEC205, you essentially like have uh, this kind of stuff, right? I think they are a kind of equivalent, right? So then we take the center and subtract, maybe I'm going to take UV and subtract center from it, right? And then I can take the length of this entire thing. And there you go. I have that uh, thing, right? I have the length. Searching um, mm -mm. mm -mm -mm. for sure, you'd be awesome demo coder. I think, I feel like I'm too old for demo coding because I've like watched some demo coding parties and there's so many young people in there and just like feel like I'm too old to do this shit. So <laughs> I probably will feel a little bit out of place. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so now, uh, yeah, this is the, this is basically the, the X of that function. But the interesting thing about that X is that it is from zero to a half. Or is it? That's a good question. Uh, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's actually draw the, the square. Right. Let's draw the square. Uh, 
So essentially, the longest value of that thing is going to be probably this, right? And this is half of the diagonal. And since a single side is one, this, uh, the size of that diagonal has to be square uh, root of two. So essentially, the biggest value of this entire thing is the square root of two divided by two, right? So that's the biggest we can get, right? And the question is, is that value even like one or not, right? So uh, I'm, I think it's not one, it's actually uh, square root square root of two, so import math. Uh, I'm not really good at math, I'm really sorry. So square root of two and divide by two, it's actually, yeah, it doesn't even get to here, um, to, to one. And this one is going to be roughly uh, half of that, right? So this is like roughly half of the of one. Um, so is that information even useful? Maybe, maybe it is useful for something. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. In any case, uh, so what I want to do in here, so this is x and I want to do sine uh, of x and I get the height of that function, right? So this is float x and I might as well call it something like float y. So this is height. And now what I can do, I can apply this height. Um, how can I apply this height? It's essentially the offset right it's essentially the offset uh, from the current position right if i just do uv right if i just do uv it's going to be offset in the direction in the direction of this thing right so that means i need to save this as a direction right by the way is everyone okay with this sort of like a style uh, of highlighting right because i'm editing code directly in a in a JavaScript string without any special highlighting. Is everyone okay with that? Or should I like copy to a different file with proper highlighting? Because I can actually do that, I think. Uh, right. Um, mm, mm -mm. It's all right. Okay. Mm -mm. It looks good. All right. So should be fine. Then. Um, mm -mm. Okay. So this is the length and this is the direction in which this vector is going. Uh, right, so uh, a JS string looks awesome in this green. Yeah, it looks like I'm a hacker, like I'm a matrix hacker. I'm hacking the matrix. Um, right, so this is the, this thing. So this is the length, right? And this is the direction, right? So that means uh, I wanna take the direction, right? I wanna take the direction and I wanna kind of normalize it. And x is literally equal to the length of the direction, so I can divide it by x. And that gives me the normal vector, right? That gives me the normal vector, uh, right? And then if I multiply it by 1, y, I basically extend in it further or backwards, depending on whether it's positive or negative. That's what I'm doing. So, but here's an interesting thing. y is between uh, essentially minus 1 and 1 which is too huge of the offset, right? Because the entire coordinates are from zero to one and we're fluctuating from minus one to one. That's a freaking huge fluctuation. So we probably want to cut it at least in half, right? So let's actually see if we can cut it in half. So, um, okay, I'm going to multiply it by uh, maybe half and that way it is fluctuating from minus... Uh, minus half to plus half, right? So it's fluctuating around this thing. So, and maybe, um, so in that case, I probably want to divide this entire thing by two, uh, maybe even by eight, right? So something like eight, but by multiplying it, I can just like actually specify the, uh, the value between which is going to fluctuate. We can say it could be fluctuating between a minus zero one to plus zero one. So I think that's kind of fine, right? So that is it, actually, in terms of like a just like a pure sine, uniform sine wave that we want to talk about, right? I think this is fine. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go back to, to this thing. All right, and let's see if it's it's actually, okay, <laughs> that is funny. It's, it's upside down, but that's fine, uh, right? This is because I made it so. Uh, maybe, maybe before trying to do anything, I want to kind of like do uh, UV, 
y equal minus like a one minus uv y that way it's always gonna be not upside down but that kind of broke the entire thing that kind of broke it and assign l okay so you can't modify a uh, varying thing in here so i probably want to uh, I probably want to do something about that. Maybe let's have a position, right? And the position is going to be vec uvx uvy1 like this. And instead of uv everywhere in here, we're going to be using the position, right? Uh, uv pause, uh, boom, boom, right? And that way, hopefully, uh, that will work. Uh, vec no matching function to overload because it has to be vec2. And do we have anything else? Alrighty, alrighty, and it is working. So you can kind of see that they are already slightly different. So this one is sort of like um, more compact. I think it's kind of working, if you know what I'm talking about. It's just like because the, um, I think because the ripple does not move much, we can't really detect it. Maybe that's what's going on in here. Also, if we make the ripple bigger, like five times more in... <laughs> this is actually very interesting. Okay, so what if now we take the sine wave, right, and start adding the current time, right? If we start adding the current time to the sine wave. Time is basically time since the beginning of the application, since you opened the website, and it's measured in seconds, right? So, and you can use this this value to sort of statelessly animate uh, your shaders and, um, you know, and your emotes. Uh, <laughs> this is actually beautiful. <laughs> the, this emote should be called cringe, right? So you basically, you ate, you, you ate a lemon. This is what happens when you eat a lemon, right? That's literally what happens. <laughs> But it kind of works. It is it is sort of a ripple effect. It's just the wave is so huge, right? Uh, so, so the wave is so huge. We can probably, I don't know, uh, multiply it by something. Uh, or we can just basically steal the parameters from the OpenGL application. I wanted to come up with the parameters myself, right? So uh, right here, we're using a pretty... Uh, pretty good parameters, parameters, as you can see, they look good. Um, but I wanted to come up with them myself, right, to actually better understand the ripple effect. And I think I kind of, I think I kind of did, right. So uh, let's see how can we make sort of the waves a bit shorter, if you know what I mean. How can we make them a bit shorter? I think it's all about, um, you know, maybe multiplying this entire thing by a, some sort of coefficient. Right. Uh, maybe not. It just actually makes it uh, slower, I think. Right. But it doesn't make them uh, any sort of shorter or anything like that. Though, you know what? We can actually make those things parameters that we can control uh, with sliders and shit. Right, like with hope, for instance, right? So if you, if you take a look at hope, you can control these parameters. We can export some of these things as a parameters and just play with them and see how they control the entire thing. So, and that's precisely why I actually implemented all of that. Right, so you can control these things. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we have two uh, parameters in here, right? So I'm actually not, uh, not sure. Do I have to do it like that? Um, hmm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I have to make it bigger. Um, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Uh -huh. So what if it's going to be two? Okay. <laughs> mm, I like that. This is so good. Um, so the breathing exercise. Yeah, it, it is a breathing exercise. Um, all right. So uh, whatever. Let's see how we do all of that. So in the hope we have a parameter, like an interval and something like that, and you have to provide the types and whatnot. And also you provide the initial values, the minimum value, the maximum value, and the step. So you can sort of control this entire thing. And how do you access this parameters? I think you literally just make them uniforms, right? So here is the hopes, and then you have hope as a uniform, 
Okay, that's that's actually pretty cool. I designed these things really well, apparently. Holy shit, this is so cool. Oh my god, like... I guess it's kind of a shame that I got so unmotivated to work on this project, because this project has a lot of cool ideas. Like, why didn't I finish that? Holy fuck. And I remember, like, I wanted this so the filters to be like a json format so you can export a filter as a json file somewhere uh, right so it contains the like all of these parameters all of the shaders and you can then export like import that shader into your instance of emote jam or something like that and, and this is precisely why i think i'm starting to remember this is precisely why i implemented the um, you know, the parser for the expressions, so you don't use a vowel. If you have like malicious the JSON, uh, it will not do any harm on your um, in your browser because it's just like sandbox or something like that. I kind of remember that. That was actually very cool. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, mm -mm -mm. Very, very interesting. Alrighty, so what we're gonna have in here is probably, oh boy, so this parameter, right, so this parameter is probably corresponding to, let's call them A and B, right, because I don't really know what to call them. This is basically A and B, uh, and in here, uh, this one is gonna be basically A, uh, so let's just call it A, it's a float, the initial value of that thing is gonna be half, the minimum, let's say, is going to be um, uh, maybe like uh, 0, 0.5, maybe 0, 0.1. The maximum is going to be, let's say, 2. And the step is going to be that. Right, so this is A, essentially. Uh, this is essentially A. What about the B? What about the B? So this is B. Uh, maybe we're going to keep them the same. Uh, why not? Because we don't really know what they represent or anything like that. So after that, uh, if I forgot a semicolon, sure. So now in a shader, I should be able to do uniform float A, right? And then uniform float B. And then, uh, actually, this is supposed to be in the fragment shader. So they are, in fact, in the fragment shader. And now I can just use them directly. There we go. So uh, if I take a look at this stuff, I can control these parameters. Yeah. So A kind of makes it faster, right? I think. So the bigger you make, the, the, the faster it sort of goes. Right. The faster it sort of goes. All right. So B, uh, what does B do? Oh, it makes the, it makes the waves bigger. Right, it makes the waves themselves very, very big. If you keep them like that, they're kind of fluctuate, fluctuating like this. Okay, so around like zero one, I think. Uh huh. We can actually make it like this. So this is B. Because I don't think I want to make them any. Maybe even like this. Yeah, that's the that's the height of the wave I want to have. That's the height of the wave. So rhetorical one five seven five. Thank you so much for um, for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic uh, TypeScript club. That's right. Look at what you can do in TypeScript. Did you guys know that you can do this kind of shit in TypeScript? Yeah, Microsoft make it possible to do this kind of shit in TypeScript. Holy fuck! Oh my god! If you program directly in JavaScript, you can't do that. You can only do that in TypeScript. Oh, oh. Because language is equals to what you can do in language, right? Okay. Mm -mm. If you are capable of doing something specific in a language, it's purely because you're using that language. So that's how it works, right? It's not because you know how to do this kind of thing. No, 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 no. This is because you're using TypeScript, right? Mm -mm. Wow, nobody can do this anywhere else, right? <laughs> because this is how language marketing works, right? So... People just show off something that you have to know how to do and somehow in people's brain it gets associated oh yeah that's because of the language not because of the skill of a programmer it's because of the language and that's how you know languages get promoted <laughs> at least that's what i learned by uh you know streaming for more than five years mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
that's on the editor. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the reason why I managed to do that is because I'm using Emacs. If I didn't use Emacs, I wouldn't be able to do that in Veeam. Hmm? Can you do shit like that in Veeam? I don't think so. Uh... All right, so uh, let me let me see. So the, the only thing I want to do, I want to make the wave shorter. I forgot how to do that. How do I make the wave shorter? Does anyone remember? Uh, because I, I fucking don't. Mm. So it has something to do with multiplying this thing, right? But, um, but I think it only makes it... Does anyone remember? Uh, sign shorter wave, right? Mm, sign wave, um, wavelengths, add frequency. Yeah, yeah, I forgot how to do that. Mm -mm. Sine wave can be measured between two points. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a parameter, isn't it? Right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so th this is what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, so A is an amplitude. Okay, I, I know that. And the frequency is uh, K, I suppose, right? So there is angular frequency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is the... Ah, uh, okay. Okay, angular frequency. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I s for some reason, I'm having a struggle to realize something. Uh -huh. All right. I think maybe I need to make a break. That's probably what's going on in here. I feel like that's what I need to do. I need to make a break because that actually kind of... Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's a breathing exercise. <laughs> All right, so if I make it like that, it is... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a very big amplitude. So I think I already established that the amplitude around like three or maybe five, even five is a bit too much. I think four, three or four. So let me actually put three or four in there. Mm. Uh, two, 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 two. So B, yeah. Zero, th um, three. Uh, this is a zero three, and that is it. All right. So I think for that one, I want to actually make like 10 or something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I need, I need to differentiate between the time-wise and spatial-wise frequency. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, but my brain kind of cannot do that right now because I think I'm a bit tired. So what I want to do, I want to make a small break uh, to sort of like reset my, my mental state. And after that, I probably will be able to come up with something. So, uh, all right, let's make a small break and all right. So we need to do something with, uh, the spatial frequency. All right. So whatever we're controlling with a is in fact, um, a time frequency, right? Because it's literally, we're multiplying the time. Uh, but here we have to do something with a spatial one. Uh, which is rather, rather interesting. So, how can we do this spatial one? Um, so, that means we have to have a sine wave. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, so, there should be an additional offset. There should be an additional offset for <clears throat> this entire thing. So, maybe we need two sine waves then. Maybe. Not quite sure, but maybe. Um, so anyway, may maybe I'm going to rename some of these things, right? So this is basically the amplitude. B is an amplitude. Amplitude, uh, right. And uh, what's cool in here is that this is a label, right? So that means you still can use variable B, uh, but in the UI is going to be displayed as uh, amplitude, right? So this is amplitude now. Uh, which is very convenient. So for the A, uh, I think it has to be something, let's call it frequency. Uh, free frequency, right? So this is the frequency and we're gonna leave the frequency as it is right now. So it's just like gonna be time. 
Uh, right, and something got uh, broken completely. Something got broken completely. Uh, I wonder what exactly. Uh, it just like doesn't. Oh, this is because it got offset. I'm sorry. Uh, right, so and it doesn't matter uh, if I change it now because I don't use it anywhere. Right, so I don't use this parameter anyways uh, anywhere, so it's fine. Uh, and in here, right, so. Mm -mm -mm. Spatial, 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 spatial. Maybe I can do just sign um, over time, sign over time, multiplied by a. Will that do the trick? Will that do the? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, it doesn't do the trick. All right. So I give up. I'm gonna go to uh, to my C code and I'm gonna steal some ideas from my C code. Uh, let me let me actually try to do that super quick. Um, let me let me see. So it's gonna be OpenGL, uh, not example, but OpenGL template. Uh, so then the shaders. So here are the shaders, and here we have a ripple effect. And how do we achieve the same thing? We actually, uh, yeah, right. If I remember correctly, this one didn't really matter. Uh, so we, we use length as the initial point and then the time and we multiply it and all of that gets multiplied by by this entire thing. Okay, I see. Uh, I guess I guess I'm gonna just copy paste this entire thing, <laughs> right? So I still couldn't come up with my own parameters, but yeah. Um, all right. So let me let me see. So this is a C length. In our case, C length is Y, right? So this is just Y, then we have time, and then we have that. And we're multiplying this parameter by the normalized vector, right? So we just multiply it by the normalized vector. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we can get rid of this entire thing. And then we can do something like this. So this is a cosine. This is the height. Um, yeah, this is the length. Or is it? I don't think so. It's actually x, right? It's the length uh, multiplied by that minus time four, and then also multiplied by this entire thing. Okay, so let me see. Is it is it working? Is it working? Yes, it is working. So uh, that's actually very good. Um, so amplitude. I can't control any of these things, right? Can't control any of them. Uh, um, this is actually very cool. If you look at that. Yeah, that is perfect. Mm -hmm. So let's actually hook up some of these parameters. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So this one is A, uh, B, and we'll need the other one, C, the C parameter. Uh, the C parameter. Mm -hmm. So the first one is going to be A, which is 12, right? Uh, this one initial value is 12. So I suppose the, the minimum is going to be that. The maximum, let's say 24, right? Uh, right. And let's see what we control with the A. Uh, I can make it smaller. And this is what I control. Mm hmm. So this is what I can control in here. So it was around 12. So the other one is going to be the B and it has something to do with the time. So that was actually fourth, um, right? It was four. This is going to be the minimum and the maximum here is going to be this thing. Uh -huh. Let's see, let's see. Can I control that one? Mm -hmm. So it's basically time frequency. It's more of a time frequency. Okay. So, and the last one is going to be C, uh, which is that. Uh, zero, zero, 003. Okay. So C is. Was it zero, zero, 003? Um, yeah, it was zero, zero, 003. 
So the minimum is going to be 0, 1, and the maximum because of that, let's say, is going to be 6, and the step is going to be something like that. Uh, Alright, so now I should be able to control all of that stuff. Let me, let me see. So this is amplitude, actually. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you can actually make it super big to the point that it's like, yeah, looks like this. I can probably make it even like bigger in terms of like a maximum value because I think it's going to be interesting. Right. Up to 10. Uh, that's actually super big. Mm, yeah, I think around six was actually perfect. So let's keep it. Let's keep it like that. Um, so this is amplitude. Uh -huh. And something got broken, right? Is that what happened? Because it stopped working. Oh yeah, I see. Uh, amplitude. Yeah, there we go. So this one is. Okay, so I suppose this is the time frequency. Let's keep it as a time frequency. Uh, this is more of a time frequency. Uh -huh. So this actually breaks UI, but yeah. Let's call it something like freq. Uh -huh. So this is a time frequency. And I suppose this is the spatial. This is the spatial frequency already. Uh, Mm. Or maybe wavelength. We can call it wavelength. I think this is a wavelength. Right, because it's a, a. Right, this is actual like wavelength. Yeah, this is a wavelength. And uh, okay, so this is a separation of the uh, like spatial frequency and time frequency. I guess that's how we separate them. Uh -huh. And then the up. Okay, that makes sense actually. All right, but they actually subtract in here, which is rather interesting. What if I add those things together? Uh, all right, so they're gonna be in a different order. Yeah, it kind of feels in a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you have to subtract it because it has to go up from the sides. If that makes any sense, it has to go from the sides. So this is a ripple effect. Uh, hmm. So, but if I try to render this entire thing, it's not gonna loop perfectly. That's kind of the problem, right? It's not going to loop uh, perfectly, right? As you can see, there is sort of like a cut, right? It's for, for this entire thing to loop perfectly, we need to uh, understand its period, right? We need to understand its period. And how can we understand its period? That's a very interesting question. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So what's going to be the interval? Uh, of this entire thing. Man, I'm getting nervous actually to, to actually realize that. You can use these parameters in the duration, right? You can compute them in the in the duration. Um, <clears throat> so if I take a look at something like circle, right? If I take a look at something like circle, we have a math. Oh, so OK, so this one is fixed. This one is kind of fixed. Maybe I need to take a look at the hop, right? So there is an interval, right? So there's an interval and it's just like interval multiplied by two. Mm. Is the period two pi over length? Probably, but I'm not sure if it's going to work properly, but we can try. We can probably try. So two over math pi, um, right? math links. I'm not sure if it works correctly. Does it does it work in the correct order? Um, so we can we can just basically try this entire thing. Uh, right. And if I try to render this entire stuff. Right. Nah, it didn't work. Uh, it really, really didn't work. And the, the, the reason why I can't come up with this thing is because I didn't come up with these parameters myself. So this is usually happens when I d just don't understand the, the logic behind this entire stuff. So that's why. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, right, for instance, uh, cosine was just a time, right, if it was just a time, uh, the 
interval, the interval would be 2 pi, right? So I can just say 2, uh, 2 pi, and that is it. Mm, uh, excuse me? Yeah, this is what I want. 2 pi. If I'm multiplying this entire stuff, like say by 2, right, I have to sort of divide it by 2 as well, right? Does that make any sense, right? I divide it by, uh, by A, right? But there's also this thing. There's also this thing, which kind of, um, yeah, I can't come up with this thing right now, on, especially on the stream, and also with a little bit of distraction. Thank you so much, Turnsha. I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly for uh, eight months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our Epic Type Script Club. Mm. All right. Also, I'm not sure if this entire thing even computed uh, correctly, right? I'm not sure if it is in fact computed correctly. Uh, so maybe this is one of the things I wanna sort of like check, right? So let me, let me see, because I don't remember what this entire thing is capable of, right? Uh, parse expression, compile expression, um, run expression. Yeah, you, you basically have to go through uh, several phases because be before you can even do this entire thing. <clears throat> before you can even do this entire thing. Mm -hmm. If cosine, if we just have cosine time, the period would be 2 pi. If the time was multiplied by 2, right, it would be going 2 times faster. It would be going 2 times faster. Uh, we would have to divide it by 2. Right, so cosine uh, time a equal 2 pi divided by a then if we are offsetting this thing somehow if we are offsetting it somehow um right by 10 or maybe 20 i suppose it doesn't really matter because that offset is sort of fixed right is that is offset is sort of fixed uh and in here in fact what we're doing we just have this variable, right? So this is the variable. Uh, and the only thing that matters in here is B. So we have to actually divide by B, not by A. And the rest of the stuff, like X, A, we can treat like a, the constant offset. I don't think it matters that much. I don't think it affects the time because it is not the time. Right. Maybe that's what we have to do in here. It doesn't have to be... Uh, a, it has to be B, so it's a time frequency rather than the wavelength. That is quite important. All right, I think I had a pretty good grasp on that thing, and uh, now let me try to render this entire thing. Is it gonna work? Hell yeah! So I'm, t I'm telling you, I have to come up with these things myself, otherwise I just don't understand them, right? So, like, I honestly, I'm kind of envy people who can just, you know, memorize a bunch of shit and just use it correctly every time. I can't memorize shit. For me, I have to understand things on a very, very deep level before I can even do anything useful with them. Right. So I cannot memorize a bunch of recipes and just like successfully recognize, oh, okay, I can use rec this recipe here. I can use this recipe here. My brain doesn't work like that. I have to like really understand the thing on a very deep level before I can even produce anything useful out of that. So, and it's like, it's kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time, uh, because it may look like I'm doing something very cool, very impressive because I have a deep understanding, but at some point I may fail to do even the simplest thing because i fail to deeply understand the simplest thing do you know what i'm talking about it's, it's kind of weird i, I kind of i can't explain that sometimes right so yeah uh so and i think yeah so there you go we have a uh, the uh we have the gif which you can now 
download actually. Uh, right, I can download this GIF. Um, and maybe even upload it somewhere. So let's see where I can upload this stuff. Uh, if I take a look at the downloads, uh, result, and this is the 10. I can't really see it because Emacs, my, my specific instance of Emacs can't play the GIFs, but I can move this thing in here, right? And then open this entire stuff uh, in Chromium, right? I'm opening it in the Chromium. And this is a GIF generated from um, um, from emoji. Another thing we can do, we can actually go to BTTV, like a third party thing, and upload that emote in there. So let's actually see how can we call uh, that emote. Um, so we're going to call it Clown Wave, right? So let's call it Clown Wave. Uh, and dashboard, upload emote, uh, Clown Wave, right? Uh, logo racer. I don't remember that one. Uh -huh. eh. Programming. Zosin. What is it called? What is it called? I forgot. I forgot. Uh, emoji. <laughs> right. And clown wave. There we go. Uh, the clown wave and ULO sharing. And also I'm going to upload the emote. Uh, okay. So based on uh, the original drawing that I own, that I made, actually, I made the original drawing. It's a derivation of original drawing, and it's based on that. So it's kind of like have, I think I have all the rights on that, even though the clown was made by someone else, I think. Um, but anyway. Mm -mm. So it's taking some time. I don't know why. Is it so hard to upload? Maybe it's actually maybe encoding something. Or some other stuff and we have a clown wave and uh, that should be available in the chat so i'm going to actually refresh the bttv emotes in chat uh, clown clown wave uh, do we have clown wave there we go we have a clown wave and that thing is generated uh from our shader so this is a clown wave isn't that cool so yes 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 kawaii yes Mm -mm -mm. So, as you can see, it is working. It is working. Cool. Uh, now, um, so what I wanted to do, I think the original idea of that sort of shader, right, of that sort of shader was... Uh, was was used in our Discord server. I don't think I can find that thing yet. But the emote that somebody used on our Discord server was the following. So I still need my thing in here. Oh, by the way, can I uh, connect um, this thing like so? Oh, I think I can connect my uh, tablet to a different USB port, which makes it a little bit more convenient. Uh, okay, go. and it doesn't work. Yay, I'm so happy. This is annoying. My setup is annoying. I really apologize for that. Okay, so... Okay, seems to be working. Okay, so we had a sad game mode, right? Does anyone remember the sad game mode? Right. So a uh, sad game mode like, has like sort of this shape, right? So this is a sad... Like, imagine that this is a sad game mode, right? And then the emote looked like this, right? There was a mirror of Sadge, right? There was a mirror of Sadge like this, right? And there was a ripple effect applied to the bottom part. So there was a Sadge looking down at, at its own reflection, right? And then we saw that emote. I don't remember who used that emote on Discord. It's from the uh, different server. We look at that emote and we thought, that's a cool filter for emote jam. So you can upload anything in here, not only Sadge, and it will automatically generate that image for you. Right. So, and that was the ultimate goal of adding the ripple effect. So let's actually try to implement that. So essentially what we'll have to do first, we'll have to like split the image in half uh, and have two parts in there, right? So one, the original part, and another one is like a mirrored part. And then we'll have to apply the uh, ripple effect on the mirror part and uh, we'll see how it goes. So uh, for that, I think I'll need to download the sad game mode. 
Uh, right, we already have a bunch of Sadgis in the in the chat, so I suppose I'm gonna just yoink the Sadgis. Uh, Sadgis from there. Oh, Sermon, what's up? There again. Uh, all right, so let me copy this into I think. Oh, Zadgi. Uh huh. Sadgi PNG. Uh, here, have this one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. 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 For some reason, everything is so slow. Because I am slow. Uh, Sadge. This is a very Sadge moment. Uh, PCMan FM. I really like the name of this file manager. It's called PCMan FM. <laughs> it's like a... It's like a superhero radio. You know what I'm talking about? PC Man FM. This is a superhero radio. It's just like a PC Man, like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it's probably dumb. Um, Yo, radio station for PC superheroes, exactly. Mm. Mm -mm. And. Every time I hear PC Man, uh, the Pepsi Man theme starts to play in my head. PC Man! That's a very drunk sub game. <laughs> this is the drunkest sub game I've ever seen. Like, holy shit. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> what the fuck? I like that. M maybe, maybe I don't want to change anything because by itself this ripple filter is actually quite good. Uh, so maybe this, that filter of like a mirrored, um, you know, lake could be a separate filter. Let's actually leave the ripple filter or like uh, as it is. Uh, that is amazing. I love that. Look at that. Oh, it has like this greenish thingy around it. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> drunk. Yes, it's a drunk. Um, we can try to use like a different background color for this stuff. I don't know. Probably. Um, let me take a look at the filters. Uh, can I just use like uh, this one? Oh shit, it's um it's probably not gonna work. You can't just change that unfortunately. Yeah, you you're gonna end up with like actually having a green. Uh it's complicated. It's really complicated. I remember, like, I had something to sort of, like, post-process that, but I already forgot how to do that. I um, already forgot how to do that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Option to select the transparent background color. Well, you, you know, there is a small problem with this suggestion. Somebody has to implement that, <laughs> right? It's pretty cool that you can come up with idea for a feature. But if nobody implements it, it's kind of useless, like, and somebody has to implement it. Uh, no drunk gear. Well, I mean, I can try to upload, like, drunk gear, but I'm not sure if it's going to look good. Um, not sure if it's going to look good. So, I'm just afraid that it's going to look like shit. Uh, so, how drunk do we want our drunk gear to be? Uh, I think it's fine. Let's just render this thing. Sad gear man. I think I'm going crazy already. Uh, uh, this is such a catchy song, like holy shit. Pepsi knew what they do they were doing when they designed that superhero. Um Okay. Are you gonna are you gonna open anything? Oh, okay, so you're asking me some questions. Alright, so well the Sangi himself is also green, so it might be okay for that specific amount. 
So let's just actually upload it to the third party thing. I don't know. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the aliasing might be not noticeable, and the sadgi itself, like the pepper, emo, uh, the pepper frog, is not it's like green. Uh, okay, drunk gear. Right, so we have drunk gear. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, drunk gear. Uh, sharing. Yeah, sure, whatever. Let me spam my little notes. Uh, little precious attention emotes. That's what I want from BTTV. Looks like shit. I love it. It really looks like shit. So I will have to do something about that, but maybe later. Uh, just a second. Drunk gear. Yeah, it's kind of cool if there wasn't like no the like mold around the pepe. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to do something about that. Yeah, the image itself is kind of drunk. <laughs> yeah, uh, drunk looks a little radioactive. Yeah, exactly. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. I remember, uh, I remember there was a way to post-process that. Uh, but I forgot where I applied this thing. Uh, so let me actually find... Mm -mm. Because I remember something similar with the Gebated Emote, because Gebated Emote has something weird in its background with just alpha set to zero. And our filters didn't take that into account and that's weird stuff was showing on the um, on the screen so i need an original debated mode actually uh, so give me some debated mode oh i think it was blob right i applied that to blob and it looked really weird um oh yeah there we go that's how i fixed it that's how I fixed it. So essentially I took the alpha and if the alpha was, yeah, if the alpha was above the half, I would keep that pixel. If it was below the half, I would nuke it. And that way I sort of control that the aliasing thingy. So I can actually bring that to the ripple effect. I kind of decided to, all of that starts to bring back to me. Uh, so I can probably try to do that. Yeah, so just like add this additional thing. I wanted to have this as a, post-processing uh, thingy at some point, but I don't know. Okay, so uh, there's that. Everything seems to be working. Everything seems to be twerking. Uh, let me find the sadgia. So this is uh, the sadgia. And it worked, I think. No, I'm not sure. So let's actually try to render this thing. But there's something around the edges. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Hopefully, crossing the fingers. Yeah, it worked. So yeah, it's a, it's a very simple fix. Essentially, when there is aliasing, there is something fishy with alpha uh, channels. So basically nuke all of the alpha pixels that are below half and it kind of works usually. So that's how I do that. Maybe I should like automatically apply that to all of the images, right? And it, it starts to get back to me. Yes, I want you to have like, fixed post-processing for all of the animated emotes. Fixed post-processing, and that was one of those things. But to, to have like a fixed post-processing, what I needed is like um, uh, frame buffers and stuff like that, right? And I don't remember why I didn't implement them. I think maybe WebGL doesn't support them, or maybe I didn't know how to properly work with the frame buffers. Now I kind of know, right? Mm -mm. So there's some pixels wrong with the left edge. This is actually a minor thing. I didn't think it's that important. Uh, right. So because the, the mode is going to be small anyway. Right. So since it's going to be small anyway, uh, nobody's going to notice that. Okay, let's nuke this one. Um, and let's upload it again. Uh, drunk gear. Drunk gear. And I think I actually put that into the downloads. Uh, and it was sad gif. 
I hope I did that correctly. Oh my god, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, so, yeah. There's two Sadgis. This is because I moved the other one. Okay. Drunk, yeah. And also sharing and caring. And upload the mode. Mm -hmm. Last spam, by the way. Chat. Last spam. And two, 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 two. Come on. All right. So that one actually looks way better. Holy shit. Uh, look at that. That looks way better. Oh my god. That is perfect. Uh -huh. Let me actually like zoom in a little bit. So that's very cool. <laughs> Drunk. <laughs> Hello, Sandy Uh Yeah. This is a drunky moment. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's me after Earl Grey. That's actually pretty cool. So while developing this filter, we came up with pretty cool mode, I suppose. Drunk. <laughs> nice. All right, so let's actually commit this filter. Uh, right. Uh, because I think by itself, it's already very useful. Um, Mm -mm -mm. And by the way, if I remember correctly, I also have to commit the JavaScript because the way we deploy this the website, it's automatically deployed. We just take the whole repo and just deploy it. That's why we also commit the uh, compiled JavaScript. Um, so that's basically what's going on in here. Um, mm, do we have any public, like a CI thingy on this stuff? I don't remember. I think there was some CI shit. Yeah, there was some CI. Let's 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 take a look. Yeah, workflows that. Uh, so check out setup node. Uh, we, we would at least check the the compilation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's actually do a pull request. Um, repo filter. Right. Um, though, wait a second. I need to do a very important thing. I didn't think. Ripple has to be the first filter though, right? So usually the first one is hop. Uh, we should put Ripple maybe at the bottom somewhere. So they're usually put in the order they appear in, in this thing, right? Okay, everything seems to be compiling. Now, if I take a look at the website, right? I take a look at the website. So the, um, the filter is hop. And for the ripple, I go here, and here is the, the ripple. Okay. Uh, there's a GitHub workflows. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Mm. Okay. Um, add uh, ripple effect. Right. I think by itself, ripple effect is kind of useful. So I also was thinking that maybe you would have some sort of a way to combine several effects together, right? So that would be also pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. let me see, and let's push that uh, right into the origin, right. Mm, right into the origin, and let's create a pull request. So add ripple effect, create pull request. So and the CI should just check if this entire thing compiles, right? Mm -mm. It wasn't too bad, right? So just like a, a little bit of a shader, a little bit of a shader. So we got some subs. Uh, just a second, I need to refresh everything. I can't. Uh, stream elements doesn't show me anything, which is weird. Uh, Dumb, I have you dead. One three three seven. Thank you so much for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, stream elements have died. They don't show me the latest subs. Nice. Very cool. And now it shows them. Okay. Uh, I finally switched to stream elements uh, from Streamlabs. Right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. As a stance against what, what they've done to OBS. Of course. Yes, yes. I do I do care about that. Yes, yes. Because I use OBS. Um, all right. So everything seems to be fine. Uh, so let's merge everything. Okay, so now in a couple of minutes, the uh, website that is deployed in here should receive the uh, the filter, right? 
so we should have a ripple in here so we, we don't have it yet but in a couple of minutes when everything is deployed we're gonna have the we're gonna have the filter so how much time do we have how much time do we have I already streamed for almost two hours right so it's one hour 40 minutes and I didn't think if I have time for the second filter with the mirrored lake or something like that I think I'm gonna develop that one uh, maybe off screen or maybe later right so I just wanted to program in uh, TypeScript and WebGL shaders today. So, and that's what I did. Uh, I finally applied my new knowledge about ripple effects in an actual application. So, yeah. Check out this website if you're like a streamer and want to have like a cool animated emotes for your channel. You can probably generate them here. So, we have more uh, different filters in here and you can customize them if you know how to do WebGL shaders and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know how many filters um, Twitch has right now, but I imagine I remember there was not that many of them. Uh, there was not that many. Mm, Ripple is now loaded. Okay, let's actually take a look. So uh, I still don't have that. I think I need to maybe refresh with Control F5. Uh, yeah, there we go. We have Ripple. Cool. So we can use Ripple now. So it doesn't have the controls in here, and this is because it's a behind feature flag. Uh, all right, so to have that, you would have to, um, mm, enable feature params, right? So like so, uh, and then you would have the parameters in the ripple, which you can control if you want, right? So you'll have to access this thing. Uh, all right, so that was actually fun. Uh, but unfortunately, boys and girls, it is time for me to go. Thanks everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you all on next Azuzin session. Thank you for all of the subscriptions, for all of the support. I extremely appreciate that. Uh, and I gotta go. So enjoy the website and love you all. Mwah.